Hello everyone, Praise Good here, and welcome back to more of King of Cards. Last time, we acquired our first Justice deck. And unfortunately, we're not going to be using that deck immediately. What we're first going to be doing is going back home, but which, which is not really going back home, it's to get more money! Oh, everybody loves money. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm dumb. Hold on. Wait, I'm stupid. I can save this slightly. Look, I saved it slightly, all right? Slightly being the key word. I I do enjoy the uh, movement in this game, by the way. Okay, I finally fell. Okay, dragon. Bring me up. Uh Okay, there we go. Oh, by the way, that's a function I never talked about. So if you do do your charge... Oh, God. Get to do it again. If you do your charge, you can kind of cancel it out by just quickly flicking the stick backwards. And you'll and you'll basically kind of do a... You'll kind of do a mid-air. You'll kind of do a stop, even if you're in mid-air when you do it. I want to say music-wise, by the way. For anybody that's curious, music-wise in this game... There is unfortunately not too much variance. Yeah, I don't think there is too much variance in this in uh, this one from anything else. Oh, I didn't see this money here. Haha. The simpleton, the fool that I am, I didn't see the money. So you'll probably see me do that a lot where I'll just like, I'll be mid-charged and I'll go, wait! It's a little, it's a little, uh, it's a little off-putting doing it, though. I shouldn't say off-putting. It's a little, like, I don't know what the word I want to use is. It's a little hard to get used to doing, doing that. Because you're so used to just charging full volume, and then you have moments of, hold on, I goofed. Speaking of goofing, speaking of goofing, hold on, let me goof troop this. Uh, let me goof troop it. Actually, wait, hold on. Okay, this is fine. Watch this. One, two, three. Haha. -ha. Money. I love it. Now, sometimes in chess, sometimes in chess, now that we have the justice cards, sometimes in chess, it will be all money. Sometimes in chess, it may have a justice card. We'll talk more about justice cards later on, but for now, I've come home. Mother, I have hunger for food. So, I will say that, like, the dialogue that all the characters in this does change up as you go throughout the story. Oddly enough, this one that's probably based the most off of a simple concept of Mario probably has the most differentiating uh, lines of dialogue. Anyway, let's go ahead and empty our pockets. Normally, I would say hold on to a little bit of money for what's coming up in a, in a bit, but I'm dumb. And I'm not. But trust me, you'll thank me if you do save a little bit of money. Once we start doing, well, Houses of Justice. Justice, Justice, interchangeable in my brain. So all these, you can leave them at any time. There are little additional things you can do around the place. So keep your eyes open for little secrets. Oh, I messed that one up. Keep your eyes open for little secrets and things you can do kind of behind the scenes. But this is kind of like a hub of sorts that you can get into and do stuff in. Uh, I am in the window. Haha, -ha, I live here. Actually, don't want to be here. Oh! Hi, rookie. Uh, my mind is honed as armor. I need no prior experience to defeat a knave of cards. Well, here's the thing. I've already done this once, so... I will teach you. I, myself, will teach you how to play cards. So, it is a card game, yes. But I want you to note stuff as we go throughout here. What, for one... Secret Rooftop.
Ah, oh, dang, it can't get up that much higher. Anyway, let's come over here. Hi! That sounds dumb. Uh, the Glidewing has his own card, eh? Well, hi, Cooper. So we have finally seen, at least seen a card. And with this, let's go ahead and edit our deck. So your deck is those 16 cards on the right. Now, generally what I will recommend is whenever you get a new card like this, when you ever get a new card like this, try and use it to replace something that is not, that is either not as strong Excuse me. Either something that you feel is not as strong or not as viable. Like I would say with this, I would say with the, with the Cooper card if you're following along, either replace one of the beetle the beetos with it or one of the one of the propeller rats. Considering we only have two, well, we have three options. Hold on. You know, I'm gonna replace one of the rats with it. Now, of your deck, they will never let you run out of cards, which I'll discuss that in better detail later. But they will never let you run out of single these single direction cards that you see here. The Beto, the Prelorat, the, the Blorb, and the Blitzsteed. But everything else can be exhausted. Anyway, thank you. Anyway, something I should have said is, I want you to take note of what's going on up top there. Those portraits. Basically, we have to go ahead and defeat all of these, all of these players in the, in the House of Justice, in order to challenge the master at the house, which is happens to be the Black Knight. So it's the Fast Kid, the Goat. Now the Toad there is a different thing. He is a he is basically a puzzle based. He's basically a puzzle. And hi Cooper. Dang it! All right, you can charge off ladders. There's this horse wearing a cool eye patch that we can fight. And Bard. Let's edit the deck right away. So he is a right facing one, so I replace a Beto with him. This is just how I build the deck. How I go with the deck and how you build the deck, it's all yours. People are probably better at this than I am, by probably by a large margin. This is just how I play, just, as, just how I do the Joseph stuff. Anyway, in the chest here, Got some merchandise to juice up your Jostis game. Why not have a look? So you can buy various things from Chester. Again, we haven't gotten to the core mechanics yet, but there are tiers of cards. So this is so paying for these are kind of like a blind box. I don't recommend buying any of these cards until you're at the end of the game. If and I don't also don't recommend you do this if you're trying to go. Uh, I recommend you don't do this. Until that point, and if you're trying to get 100% card collection, 100% card collection is not necessary unless you are an achievo, an achievement hunter or a feat hunter. But we also have cheats. Now these will make more sense once we get to them. But I'm just going to let you read the description, and I'm going to tell you, hey, keep this in your brain pan. Anyway. Chester will become our friend in due time. With all that said, and me goofing about, let's go ahead and actually have our first game of Justice. Okay. Hey, are we playing? Yes, we are. So go ahead and take your seat, sir. Uh, well, child. Beto and Fleeto. So how this will all work? is well there's the first step so now i get to explain it how justice work is it's basically a game of shoving it's a game of shoving to get your way now the cards as you see they have arrows on them that indicates what direction they can push other cards if in the example of this beto here i cannot push it because it has exactly what blocks me from push from pushing it so, I cannot fight this Beto with this card. But something I can do is I can try and play to my strength. Is I can place this card here and then I can get pushed onto the gem. The winning goal of the game is to collect a majority of the gems on the board. 
Some boards will have one, some will have three. Some boards will be bigger, too. Now, these... Uh, I guess I can't do a show up, but uh, those those uh, blackened out spaces a little bit, those are... I'm going to recur refer to it probably wrongly, but those are the dead zone. Any card that enters that area, or any no cards can be placed in that area, with exceptions, which we'll get to later on in the game, but no cards can be placed in that area. If a card reaches that area, it's basically the edge of the board. So, like, if I push this over here, if I push this card over here like this, no other cards can no other cards can be put or no card can push my card further to the right because that's the edge of the board. Now the game plan here is to place this here. What he'll have to do is he'll have to either push his card away. Hmm. I'm thinking about this long and hard because I don't want to get bumped off. So I should say, you cannot place a card directly on a gem. So that's where the mind of it comes in. So I'm going to do this. He's got a Fleeto, which can push cards how he wishes. And I may have already screwed this up. <laughs> Gosh, I am good at this game. Uh, shoot, I actually think I lost already. Yeah, I think I actually already lost. Huh, fancy that. I'm bad at this game. I did say I am bad at these games. So what determines the end of the game is if all of the highlight as if all of these highlighted panels here. Let me go like this. I can't see. If all of the that doesn't help. If all of the brighter panels are filled in, that ends the game. Now all I can really do is try, you know, delay the ine my inevitable demise, but well, I shouldn't have done that. But he'll do that and he'll win. It's a little bit of luck. But it's probably more strategy, so and I'm bad at this. So now at this point, he can take whatever card he wants. He took my Beto, which you have infinite of, which I'm just going to replace with a Beto. Thankfully, you can rematch. Now that's the thing you put up is if you lose, the enemy will the enemy will take a card of yours. So that's the risk you run in running cards that are limited print, so to say. Anyway. I get first play. I am going to claim that. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to claim it, but I will claim it. You know, I'm going to force him to finish it off for me. Okay, fine. I'll finish it. See, that went better. So not so at the end of the match, once you win or lose, whoever whoever the winner is gets to take a card. You can sit and farm. You can sit and refight characters because some characters do have car cards that only they have. As for this kid, he has a Fleeto card. Winning gives you some money and a crest. So now I have a Fleeto card. I I'm going to take that and I'm going to replace one of my. Uh. I replace one of my Beatos. And my strategy for doing this will come will become a little more apparent in due time. So with that being done. Well, here's the other thing, and I don't know how long this will take. Even when he's trying to be condescending, he's right. I've gathered the crowd, it seems. Yeah, that's kind of the cute thing, is like the ki the people in the background actually do follow you. And keep track of your progress. Something I'm gonna do here. Now, on the overall map, you may have seen that... On the overall map, you may have seen that there were five crests. But, there were only four people we can fight in this arena. Which I think actually if we go over here to the to the left. Yep, it does drop a flag to say what your progress is overall. Anyway, enough faffing about. The fifth the fifth crest comes from this. Hello, frog. It took three planes to trap. Stop. But yes, there will be characters within East Joseph's house that has a puzzle. It is a it's a puzzle set. More most of these will be a win in one move type of 
type of puzzle to solve. But they will always statically be the same thing. Now with these, you need to study what's in your hand, which the game will the game won't draw random cards for you, it'll draw specific cards. And you also have to look at your enemy's hand. At this point, the winning play that I'm seeing is to just is to just push this off. I cannot be pushed up anymore, and I cannot be pushed left anymore, and I cannot be pushed left. So that's it. These puzzles will get more complex as time goes on, and I will probably fail them. Oh, but it's not one and done. It's not one and done with these. You do have to do multiple justice puzzles in order to get the crest from, from whoever the puzzle master is. Ah, a big board, which we have not seen yet. Now I have to study for a minute. So currently he's winning. He has three cards on board. I think so. He can push left. He can push left and he can push... Yeah, he can push left and he can push up. Which the play that I'm seeing here is actually just a push up on the- I cannot push up. I can only push down, huh? But that still works. So what this- so what this means, because we're on a bigger board now. If any card in a row has an arrow that- that opposes what you're trying to place down, it will not allow you to place that down. So for example here, if he tries to play his left push to push out my dragon here, he can't because his one skeleton dude on the on the upper left corner cannot be pushed left any further. It will, or stops from anything being pushed to the left past him. He cannot push me up because I have a down arrow. I have a down arrow in place. And he can't push me and he cannot push down because, well, we've hit the edge of the tiles in this case. Like I said, these puzzles will get more and we'll get a little more involved and whatnot later on. But as of right now, they're going to be pretty simple. Anyway, I would like to try out your last puzzle, sir. And of course, I can try and explain this better in the comments if you guys want to ask questions. Keep in mind, I'm not a big brain person, so I will probably fail explaining some of this. He has all left pushing. All of his cards push left. Okay, I can't do anything in the bottom row. I can't do anything in the middle row. So pushing down would create a draw. Pushing up is the only play, because I'm winning right now. So if no, and like I said, you can't put any pieces. That's the other thing. If your opponent cannot make a move with the cards they have dealt, they cannot make a move, so the game ends at that point. Because all he has right now are left pushing pieces, he can't push anything left. So it's done. Like I said, to win, you just need a majority of the gems. Not all, not all of them. And not all of them need to be claimed either. I forget this rule myself constantly. But also just to make sure you know that you have cleared everything at a at a table of justice. It does put up a little flag on the table to say, Hey, you have gotten the crest for this table. You don't need to be here anymore. Also, we get the croaker card. Now I will admit this part of the game is probably going to be a little slow. Ooh, double arrow. Left pushing double arrow? Don't mind if I do. So the left, so the left pushing arrow. Uh, I don't need to see this. The or the double, the double push. How it works is, it's basically basically think of it as a multiplier. If a single arrow push, if a single right arrow pushes against it, it won't push against it. If a double, if a double arrow meets a single, it overrides the single. So meaning. Like if I put Cooper down on the board and then I use Croker to push it left, I can push it left because it over because it will override its right pushing arrow. 
I'm hoping all this makes sense. I'm trying to explain it as thoroughly as possible without getting anybody lost. The kid outside, the rookie outside, would have probably taught, it to you as, uh, taught most of the rules to you as well. But I'm doing the best I can with what I got. Hello! Okay, I definitely will. But with the, with that, we have actually kind of run up on the time I'm comfortable with for per episode. So, everyone, I thank you all so much for watching this episode of King of Cards. And come back next time when we should be able to clear out the rest of the Justice House. Now that I'm done explaining most of what's going on. I'll see you folks next time. Take care.